Hi, this is Jamie with uh, Boone River Sawyers. If you look down at my feet here, we've been kind of working on some of this wood. We're getting ready to build a uh, temporary kiln in Matthew's garage. Uh, basically, these are just frames that we will suspend with posts that are leaning against that trash can over there. We'll make uh, eight foot frames and four, uh, six foot frames, one on bottom, one on top. We'll uh, then wrap it all with um, wrap it all with insulation and plastic and then put a dehumidifier in there and some heat and a heat source. We're over at Matthew's house. Um, we just went to Home Depot and loaded up uh, Moby here with um, some good supplies. We'll uh, get those supplies out and start constructing the kiln. So uh, supplies we picked up is we picked up these uh, nice sheets of uh, insulation. Got a box fan. You see some bricks down in there. And the work site. We're going to lose light here, but that's okay. The work site's back in here. Let our eyes adjust a little bit. There's the end of the kiln. We're going to go 8 feet down, 14 feet down. There's a gentleman who did a really nice job of this. Um, window's getting in there. Did a real nice job of this. We're following his video. I'll put a link in the video to that, or down below the video here. So we'll get started on this. I'll try to get this camera set up in a way that we actually can see what we're doing. All right, well, we're gonna start unloading supplies. Matthew's already got it, gotten started on the uh, boxes. We cut those up on the, cut the two by fours up on the kiln yesterday and found some scrap lumber. We only have only used um, three studs, uh, two by fours that were purchased. The rest of it is stuff that we've cut up um, on the kiln and it's pretty wet, but that's okay, we're gonna be drying. Put some painter's drop cloths down and then we'll put insulation on top of those. Matthew's inside the kiln right now, trying to come up with location for the, the bricks that we put in there. We loaded up and put on the top here, 
and we taped everything up with this amazing uh, it's called hybrid poly hanging and seaming tape and I'm not sure who makes that uh, blue dolphin tapes I'll tell you right now that is really great tape for the purposes we used it we taped up every one of our seams and we're really starting to question how badly we need the uh, plastic wrap because we've taped every darn seam including these ends so what we'll do is we'll put put the, we've got these bricks laying in here um, reason we're kind of loading the bricks heavy at this end is because we're planning to put all of our uh, equipment uh, down here um, and all of our equipment isn't a lot it'll be a dehumidifier a box fan and a heater and we may locate the heater well no we'll probably locate the box fan and the heater fairly close together um, I think we're going to need those bricks next to each other Matthew if we need to buy two more bricks buy more we'll buy no, two more bricks I'm just tired I think I'm gonna go three feet instead of two feet that's fine whatever you like um, this is right now it's totally an experiment for us we're just trying to figure out what we're doing we have a 14 foot long area for wood we don't have a piece of wood longer than nine and a half feet I believe Augie would like to say hi to everybody can you say hi Augie don't push your way through don't push your way through. you've got a good place to lay and it's out of the Sun you are here just fine good boy if you have a dog of that size, one of the value adds of a sawmill is all this sawdust, which is a great thing to put around uh, the things that Augie leaves behind. Hello, Augie. Hello, Augie. What do you think of kilns today? What do you think of kilns? Do you think kilns are hot? Or is that just... Is it hot? Hello. Hello. He's such a good boy. He's such a good boy. We'll end up putting a dehumidifier in, and then we're uh, going to put that oil heater in there, which will top out at about 130 degrees. So the, the we'll talk more about the performance of the kiln later. But you can the design is very obvious here at this point. I think uh, anybody can see that. Um, we're just going to get it taped up and get some plastic wrapped, and um, we'll eventually get some wood and bring it over. source and moving that heat around. Okay. Then I think the dehumidifier needs to go right in there, poke a hole through. <coughs> poke a hole through for your uh, um, water, or you may have to just come and empty the bucket. And I just don't see that as being a, as big a deal pump. So, do we have enough room for the dehumidifier then? That's, yeah, I think so. Should be. Yeah. Okay. Can't decide and I'll just I just want to catch on video just get it set on. I don't think we're gonna leave it on here. So we sandwiched we found an old piece uh, old piece of plywood sitting in Matthew's garage. So we sandwiched a uh, the insulation to the plywood and taped it on there. This will allow us to be able to pull the, the end of the uh, kiln off as often as we want without destroying that insulation. So we're not ready to go, of course there's no wood in the kiln, but this will set in right at the end here, we'll screw it on, um, and then we'll put these additional panels on once the wood is loaded up, we'll put these panels on and that will be it.
I'm gonna go grab a bucket quick, just so that I can tell how much uh, how much water we've lost um, every day, uh, and then I will be right back. see I've got the hose coming out here out of the back of the dehumidifier says it right there <laughs> um, I have a fan going here our idea here is our fans gonna blow that direction and we're gonna get a circular effect kind of going like this um, that's the goal you can see I got all the wood stacked in there <laughs> we didn't do ourselves any favors by cutting almost all of that in different sizes so I kind of had to make do with what I could um, I'm not terribly worried about it it's been sitting outside for about probably two or three weeks now so we're we're good and as you can see I got lots of room in the back there so I could potentially have another stack in here and Well, that's the end of part one of our dehumidifier kiln uh, project. In part two, we'll show a new set of sensors we got that have an automatic shutoff for both humidity and heat. Also, we'll check the, uh, the relative humidity of the wood that we placed in there and so we can get some sort of a sense as to how long it will take us to, um, how many weeks it will take to actually dry the wood out um, in part two. And that will be the ending uh, of the de dehumidifier kiln uh, so we'll have a part one and a part two. This has been Jamie with Boone River Sawyers, signing off.